Hi everyone, welcome to All About You and today we are going to talk about a very important subject which is our testimony. And if we're not careful about this, we, through our comparison, uh, the comparison between our testimony and someone else's testimony, this may end up impeding God from using us more, from actually sharing the testimonies we have and limiting Him from using us. So we're going to target that so God may have freedom to use you no matter what, okay? So I'm going to start with the example of many people who perhaps they grew up in church or they have, have a very strict parents, so they've never been really uh, with terrible companies and they never been involved with drugs or gangs or alcohol um, they've never been uh, they haven't been abused or betrayed they've never really faced a very terrible problem in their finances and when they look at someone else in church or someone else even in the group that they belong to they feel like oh my god my testimony is so small Imagine after that person saying, look, I was in a gang, I was betrayed and I went through hell on earth and I went through this and didn't have food to eat and I was despised and right after comes you to give your testimony, you don't feel like giving that because your testimony is like, oh, uh, today I have peace. I didn't have peace before, but today I have peace. Or, today I have happiness, I didn't used to have happiness. Even though I was not in the world, even though I was not sick, I didn't have a terminal illness, but I am happy. Or, I, I, I have joy, I, I, feel, I used to feel empty, but I don't feel empty anymore. So even though I have those things, I do have my both parents with me, I don't have a sickness, but those things didn't bring me happiness, didn't bring me joy. And you know that just by thinking, just the simple fact of thinking about that, you will see how strong your testimony is. Sometimes people in the world might even achieve even financial things, uh, you know, uh, maybe successful in their career. They fight by the strength of their arm or their efforts. They are able to achieve many things or be successful as I said in their career or even through the help of the doctors to find a healing to a sickness that they had and they were suffering with and uh, they think that or maybe they thought that once they would achieve that they would find happiness they think okay if I achieve that if I only achieve this I'm gonna find happiness so they fight they're in pursuit of this uh, great life of this happy life but then what happens when they achieve this, these things that they thought would bring them happiness and they don't, that's when depression hits in. That's when sometimes you see how come this person had everything and is, and is still depressed? What is making her depressed? Maybe you think that what can cause a person to be depressed is their losses or uh, things that people do to them or if they, they, are, they go through abuse or disappointments in life but it's not so how many people they have everything like humanly speaking to be a happy person and they're still not they're still empty and there you go that comes your testimony that comes the answer to the pro to to the the problem to the the unhappy life that many people go through many people kill themselves because they think okay I achieved this and I'm, I'm, still not, I'm still not happy. So what else is going to make me happy? There's nothing else. So there's nothing else in life for me. But you do, some, you do have something that can, 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 can transform this person's life. But then you don't give your testimony. You don't share because you think, oh, but I didn't go through all of that. Remember, there are many people, many people in this life who may have everything, everything that a person would need or would want to have and they would think like okay if I have this my life will be a paradise and it's not so in God you have found that happiness you have found that peace even if you're new in the church even if you're like okay I just stepped the feet my feet here on, at the church and maybe what you have to say is like okay the moment I stepped in and I was received and someone spoke to me I already felt that peace I felt a difference 
or the word that I received really inspired me. It revived my faith and I, I, I used my faith to achieve something. There you go. You already have something to give. Oh, but I'm new. There's so many more things that I need to achieve. It's true. All of us have many things to achieve. But you already can talk about it. Like, you know, just by tasting the cake. You know when sometimes children do this. Uh, adults do that as well. You know when there's a very nice, beautiful cake. And um, it's maybe chocolate cake, fruit cake. I don't know. A cake that you may really love and it tastes great. So what do many, many people do? They go with a finger and they go and take a little bit of the cake and they try it. Wow, how many times people they try and wow, this cake tastes really good. So they haven't yet eaten the whole cake yet. Or the piece, they didn't cut the piece and they ate the cake. Maybe it's just the icing that they have. It just got like the chocolate that was outside and they tried it and it was, wow, it tastes so good. It's, it's a part of the cake. It's not the cake yet, but it's part of the cake. So you can already talk about that because it tastes great. And you can talk to people about that for them to taste it too. But of course, uh, you're, go you're going to be able to give what you have. And I believe that by giving what God has been giving you, then you'll be able to give you more and more. And imagine if you give to people, but even for yourself, you try that cake and you're like, mm, it tastes so good. If when you understand the importance, not only to try, oh, I've tried it already, I'm okay. But not only to try, but to have that cake, to eat that cake. When you understand that importance of how your experience is going to be like, imagine if by having, just trying the icing, it's good. Imagine having the whole cake. If you have that thirst inside of you, that desire inside of you to eat, to eat the whole cake, imagine, of course, your experience to share is going to be greater than, than before, right? But that doesn't mean that you're not going to give what you already have. Your aim, you who don't have yet eaten the, the, the piece of cake, the whole cake, what, that, what does that mean? You don't have the Holy Spirit yet. So you may have been healed, you may have, have felt some peace and joy or direction. Uh, you abandoned the, the old life, you, you don't use drugs anymore, you know how your life used to be because of drugs, how much you have lost, or maybe you didn't have peace, you didn't have a, a happy home, or maybe you didn't have a, that, that job that is really a blessing in your life and you can testify, you can talk about it to other people, but you don't have that cake yet, you don't have the Holy Spirit yet. If you don't have him yet, this has to be your ultimate goal. Because when you try, try this cake, it's like, of course, it's an example, <laughs> but it's like you become the cake. Like you're not just eating, you become that cake as well. So it's like when you receive the Holy Spirit, it's no longer just you, it's God through your life. It's you and him, it's him inside of you. He becomes a part of you. So this cake become a part of you. You start becoming like tasting like that cake. So people look at you, mm, I want to taste that too. It looks delicious, right? So you, you taste like that cake. So you become stronger. You become, you, you're able to overcome so many things in your life. And you know the, the, the blessing, the, the greatness of becoming that cake or having the essence of God, having the Holy Spirit. The difference between then it, it's true. The difference between that testimony of someone who was healed, someone who maybe is in the church until today because they are so thankful for what God has done in their lives or because they achieved something. The greatness is that someone who has the cake, who has the Holy Spirit, this person will be the one who will be able to, to be sustained when a tribulation comes. This is the person when the persecution arises, they will stand on the stand their grounds and they will not give up. These are the persons when they go through their deserts, they become stronger, they they shine more than they used to. They they flourish in the desert. These are the people, the ones who have the Holy Spirit, the ones who um, when they go through a, a hard moment or a disappointment in life, they're not gonna keep grudge. 
They're not going to give up on themselves. They're not going to allow situations that happen to them to make them, uh, you know, to to hide on their shell in their shells and and to stop them from from acting from from you know to to give more of themselves to God on the opposite they will allow that situation to actually do good to them to help them to improve more to learn more to get more experiences the ones who have the holy spirit will remain until the end it's a it's a transformation of who you are it's not just an addition to your life that is, is giving you a, a good sensation or makes you feel good. It's, it's something that happens inside of you that it changes your essence. It changes the way you see situations. It changes the way you see yourself. So you don't need appro people's approval anymore. It's not like you became rebellious and you don't care about the, what the world thinks about you and you just go on doing whatever you want. No, it's not what we're talking about. But... Is the, the the thing of you not 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 having that need to fit in to please people, and at the cost of you losing yourself. It's like you need so much to be around people. You need so much to be loved by everyone else that you end up becoming or doing things or accepting things that deep down you don't feel good. You, you don't have peace inside of you. you. That those things affect you inside. So when you have the Holy Spirit, He fills that, that uh, void that no one else can fill in your life. You become stronger and you're able to cope with situations and you are able to remain until the end. With the Holy Spirit, you become that living testimony of Jesus. Not only the testimony of the healing, not only the testimony of, um, you know, of a... Uh, 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 an addiction as I said of how how maybe you may feel nicer you feel good but it's a testimony you are the testimony like it's your life it's who you are it's not only what, what you have achieved but it's who you are and only God is able to change a person only God is able to do that so do not despise the testimony you have because if you don't give what you have now Imagine if, okay, how can I give my Holy Spirit to, to, to this person if this person is not willing to give? So if you are receiving from God, give. Give. Ah, it's not that important. It is. Give. It's not the whole cake yet, but you can already testify about it. Oh, but I don't have the cake yet. Keep on searching. Keep on seeking. Keep on sacrificing. Let go. If you want to have the cake, instead of complaining or doing hard, like so many people, they do. They say like this, ah, uh, you know, I don't have the cake. I don't have what to give. So let me give up. Excuse me. You don't give up. You dig in until you find the cake. There are many people who have the cake. Look at this. They have the cake and little by little, they start diverting their attention from everything that only God can do and give to a person and they start being worried about the icing that they don't have yet. Oh, but I don't have an icing. I don't have an icing. I don't have the cherry. Where is the cherry on the top of the top of my cake? I want to have a cherry. If I don't have a cherry, I don't want a cake anymore. Excuse me. <laughs> the cake is the most important thing. The icing is a matter of time. And you are going to achieve that as when you receive the Holy Spirit, He gives you wisdom, He gives you inspiration, He gives you strength. If you invest on in your communion with God, he will, he will help you through. And you'll achieve that. And what if you don't have the cherry on the cake yet? Oh my goodness, you have the cake. There are people who have the cherry and already happy. Oh my God, I found the cherry. <laughs> you have the cake. Do not despise it. Do not despise it. Do not despise. There are so many people who will be able to give everything. It's because they don't know it yet. That's why we need to go, go out there to find them. Because they are willing to give everything. To have what you have. Do not despise it. Okay? And there are those as well who comes to us. And even with the Holy Spirit. Even with the Holy Spirit. We don't have many experiences that many people have. Like for example, there are many people that we encounter that they've been through abuse they've been through a trauma they have been betrayed 
or they're moms and you're not a mom or they are older than you and you're half their age oh my god i cannot i don't have condition to help this person because i'm not a mom or i've never i've never been betrayed what i'm gonna tell this person imagine there are churches out there with an assistant pastor so young and he's there taking care of mothers grandmas uh, people have been abused betrayed they are suicidal and perhaps, you know, perhaps though, because it's not a mom. <laughs> it's true. Not perhaps. Indeed, he's not a mom. <laughs> and he's not, maybe he hasn't been betrayed. But he's helping people to find a transformation in their lives. And God is using them anyways. Because God is the one who transforms people. So, yes, it's true. Um, it's true that many of the experiences we face it does help people relate to to us and and help them in a way of you know even putting yourself in their shoes it's really helpful but it's not everything because how many people out there in so many institutions so many places they have a lot of experience to share but they don't have the solution true or not how many people they they talk about the way they cope with depression but they, they didn't overcome depression they are working with the depression they are going, they're having panic attacks. There are people who give speeches. And, uh, in, you know, maybe even during the break, they have a breakdown. During the break of talking to people and be the inspiring people. So they have inspirational messages to share, but they don't have the solution. So maybe you don't have the experience, but you have the solution. You have the God who can change their lives because the same God who heals is the same God who restores is the same God who forgives is the same God who gives strength is the same God who does everything our God is a powerful God did you know that one day some somebody came to me and said something like that not the person who came to ask for help it was someone else who went through an experience like that for example she went through a, a, a betrayal Oh, you're not, you don't have condition. She turned to me and said to me, you don't have condition to help people who have been through abuse or who have been, uh, have been betrayed because you've never been betrayed. You don't have conditions. Can you imagine? So I don't have, it's true. Do you know what is true? I don't have conditions, but God has. And I believe there is a God inside of me who can change this person's life. And even if I don't have the conditions, if I don't know how to speak well, if I may not even in details know exactly what this person is feeling, but I have the God who knows, who saw this person even before they entered the church or they crossed my path, my path and spoke to me, he saw this person and he knows what this person is feeling. And if I allow God to use me, he will give me the conditions and the capacity to help this person. And that's what you have to have your eyes focused on. Not all the disciples of Jesus, when they came to him, when they were called, they were not sick, they were not using drugs, they were not betrayed. Many of them didn't even have a, 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 a wife, but God used them. When they received the Spirit of God, when they had received from him, God enabled them to be used by, 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 by him. And to, to perform great miracles in people's lives. Because at the end of the day, it's our God who does the work. It's our God who gives conditions. And the less conditions you have, it's even better. Because you depend more on Him. And not on your own strength, capabilities, experiences, etc. etc. Alright? So this is the message that I'd like to pass to all of you today. Thank you so much for joining us. And we hope to see you here next week with another topic. Bye-bye, ladies. Take care.